Hi everybody, my name is Kim, and you might have noticed that this video looks a little bit nicer than some of my other videos, at least that I hope it does. Um, I work for my university and we have like cameras and stuff, so I decided to take one home and do this video on that instead. So I'm trying to film this in 4K. I think it might be working. I don't know. I'm not great with cameras, but I think it is. So. This is also really exciting because I can actually have my phone to read off of my notes. So this is really good. I can see myself. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited about this setup right now. Um, I'm going to try and do this for future videos too because it's just very useful. So today um, I'm going to be talking to you about something that I have wanted to talk about for quite a while, pretty much since I started this channel. This was a uh, a video that I really wanted to do and this is also the next point on the uh, I've been going through this blog post of uh, reasons that God definitely exists and this is the next reason um, but I thought that it deserved sort of a whole video of itself so here we are and we are going to be talking about the Shroud of Turin now you might be wondering to yourself Kim what is the Shroud of Turin well that is an excellent question um, to put it very simply, to start with, uh, the Shroud of Turin is a piece of cloth <laughs> uh, or linen, I guess, that looks like this, which probably doesn't look like much of anything to you right now. But if you, in the wise words of Missy Elliott, uh, flip it and reverse it, uh, then it looks like this. Uh, and then if you add some, uh, a little bit of artistic license, put a little bit of retouching on it. It looks like this, which is the picture that you see when you just Google like Shroud of Turin. So it got me way more excited than um, I really needed to be. It took me forever to figure out that the actual artifact just looks like the big brown mess that I showed you first. As I'm sure you can guess, this cloth is supposed to be our good, good buddy, Jesus. He is a friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> and the reason that there is so much hype around this particular piece of cloth is that people uh, believe that this is the actual burial cloth that Jesus was actually wrapped in after his uh, crucifixion that has his body on it because reasons? I, I don't know. Now obviously there is a lot of controversy and a lot of mystery um, around this piece of cloth so that's why I wanted to talk to you about it today just to get into it a little bit. Personally I didn't even know that this cloth like existed until a few months ago when I was starting up my channel again and I just was fascinated by this strange rabbit hole so I hope you'll come along with me for this little adventure. Like a lot of religious topics I feel like for every one person that's saying one thing there's some other source that's like saying the complete opposite so if there's anything that I brush over too quickly here or anything you think I should have added, feel free to tell me down in the comments below because I would love to hear that. But let's get into the history. The Shroud first um, appeared in historical records in the 14th century. Um, the first like official uh, documents that they have of it are from around the late 1300s, but it's guessed that it was first like shown to people in sort of the mid 1300s. Now you might be saying, wow, Kim, that sure is a long time after Jesus was supposed to be crucified. And to that I would say, yeah, yeah, it is. The shroud is first recorded to have been in possession of a knight in the 1390s, I believe. Yeah. Although, like I just said, there's claims that these records might even not be the same shroud. We don't know. But we know pretty much all the history of the actual current shroud from the 1400s until present day. It was first brought to Savoy, which is a cool little place that has a teeny little bit of France, a teeny little bit of Italy, and a teeny little bit of Switzerland in it. But after a fire in the 1500s that gave it some of those lovely little damaged areas you see on it today, uh, the shroud was taken to Turin in Italy, which is where it is today, and where it got its name, the Shroud of Turin. In 1983, the Catholic Church was officially given ownership of the shroud, which was a pretty big deal in its history because before it had been owned by, like, families and groups. And even though the Catholic Church owns it, they have never officially said one way or another whether they condone it or not or whether they believe that it's real or not. 
In fact, our buddy John Paul John Paul um, actually made a statement back in the day encouraging people to study it more and saying that he wanted scientists to look into it. And I'm always a little bit skeptical when a pope <laughs> says something that sounds nice, but that did sound nice. Now, despite the Shroud having a confirmed history that is a lot more recent than the crucifixion of Jesus, obviously it wouldn't have this following that it did if there weren't some people who thought it was a little bit older. There are a few different Bible passages that talk about Jesus's um, burial cloth. Some say that he was wrapped in like a big cloth. Some say that he was wrapped in strips of linen. In case you haven't noticed, the Bible likes to keep its statements very buried just so that no matter what situation you're in, there's a little snippet that supports what you need to believe. <laughs> the idea of an image miraculously appearing on different materials also isn't new to Christianity, but it's not quite as new as it should be. There's a name for these sorts of pictures that I'm going to put on the screen right now because I cannot pronounce it. Aki Akairo Pauaita. I could look up how to pronounce that, but that doesn't make my video as funny. Akiro Poeta. Reports of these images go back to around the 6th century, but not much was heard about them before then. There's a whole bunch of them and I won't get into them right now because it seems like everybody was trying to get on this like miraculous image trend <laughs> back in the day. Uh, but from a skeptical perspective, I don't think that there's really much there. In my opinion, they all look very handmade. They match the art styles of their respective time periods and there's not really much to them other than making great memes. You know that one meme where the lady is peddling merch at the crucifixion? Yeah, that was one of these, so there you go. So the Shroud of Turin is from a miraculous trend of miraculous images that miraculously started happening long after the supposed crucifixion of Jesus. So why do people still believe it then? I think honestly a huge contributor to this is just how creepy the picture looks. Like this picture here doesn't really make me want to investigate it, but this creepy and strange like negative mysterious image that's interesting and that I think makes people want to learn about it more. Another big reason is that the Shroud um, has been allowed to be studied a little bit, enough that it has its own name for it, which is uh, Syndonology, is the study of the Shroud. And the scientific studies have still left quite a lot of mystery around it. Now, because I know all you smart cookies out there are wondering, yes, the cloth was carbon dated, although it took a while. The story behind this is fascinating and goes very deep and I won't get into it all here. I encourage you to read up on it yourself. Um, but there have been people who had wanted to carbon date the shroud for a very long time. Um, but before around the seventies, uh, carbon dating required a lot bigger of a sample for it to be done properly. But around the 70s, technology improved and you needed a smaller sample size. So it seemed like it was finally time to carbon date this Jesus cloth. The church put together a group of about 30 scientists um, of different religious faiths, different backgrounds, and they worked for over 10 years just to get the shroud to be allowed to be carbon dated. There were debates with the labs who were supposed to perform the tests, debates between the scientists themselves, and ultimately the church ended up completely changing the plan that the scientists had come up with in the first place. But eventually, in uh, 1988, a sample was finally able to be taken from the shroud and it was sent to three different laboratories for testing. These labs obviously like weren't allowed to communicate with each other um, and they were also given other like sample cloths to test along with the shroud, I guess just to make sure that their results were accurate. Um, one of which was actually uh, a piece of a coat that belonged to Louis the IX, which I just thought was super cool. The labs all returned their test results to somebody who worked at the British Museum who then like compiled them and then sent them to the church, who then did a press conference giving them to the people. On October 13th, 
1988, it was announced to the world that the labs had concluded with 95% confidence that the shroud was dated between 1260 and 1390 AD. And if you've been paying attention, that matches exactly with the first historical documents that we have about the shroud. Each lab's results and like methods, I guess, were published um, publicly, and that was that. Now, as you can guess, um, a lot of people weren't happy with these results, and there have been a lot of attempts, specifically with the carbon dating, to debunk it and say that it wasn't like done properly or whatever. There's a lot of people who have tried to do this, um, but just in general, it is considered that the carbon dating was actually accurate and done correctly. Some other studies that were done compared it to some actual like first century um, cloths that were found in Jerusalem and just found that the way that the fabric was woven didn't match up. Some scientists took a look at um, blood stains that were like on the wounds of the guy on the cloth and compared them to what the Gospels say uh, happened to Jesus. They found that the wounds matched and that the um, blood could have been blood stains, could have been paint, it's unsure. Whether it's blood or paint to me kind of makes sense if you think about all the weird shit that would have been in paint back then. I don't really find it that surprising that uh, there could have been traces of stuff that looks like blood. There were a few other studies. Um, there was one with pollen that just didn't make sense to me. I tried really hard, guys, and I just couldn't figure it out. There's this whole thing with like microscopic text that they said that they found on it. I, it didn't make sense and like I'll save you the trouble of reading it. It just didn't seem like there was any grounds. With the pollen one, it seemed like it was faked or something like that. With the um, text one, it seemed like it was just computer glitches. There have been a lot of weird studies done on this piece of fabric. There have been a few different theories about how the, the picture actually appeared on the shroud. And there have been some recreations that, in my opinion, look pretty darn good. The most famous recreation was a professor in 2009 who used uh, acid pigmentation and he did this recreation that is pretty spot on to the original. Um, people have suggested that some kind of sculpture, possibly a bas-relief sculpture, which for those of you who didn't spend three years suffering through high school art, is like sort of a 2.5D sculpture that's still like attached to the background. It was very common like around the time that the shroud was probably made. Um, people think that that was used somehow to get the image on. If it had been somehow made with like a 3D sculpture or like an actual person, if you think about it, the image would be quite warped on it, which implies that some kind of two-dimensional like method was used or a 2.5D uh, method was used to get the picture onto the cloth. There are a few other theories of methods that um, could have been used to make the art. People have done it like using medieval technology to like try and figure out how they did it. And there's also theories that some kind of strong radiation power that's stronger than any power we could have made today also made the image. As you can probably guess, I am very skeptical about those claims. Now just my personal opinion, obviously I am an atheist um, and I'm very skeptical about these kinds of things, but I am also an artist. As aforementioned, I spent three years suffering through high school art class, but I also make art myself and just in my opinion, my take on it, this looks like art to me. And for how the image got onto the cloth, I honestly don't care. <laughs> that doesn't really make it more compelling to me. I think it's interesting that we don't know, but just because we don't know how the image got onto the cloth, to me, does not prove that uh, this cloth actually belonged to Jesus, especially since it got carbon dated. Um, the wounds matching up with what the Gospels say happened to Jesus, to me, is even more compelling evidence, because if they match, 
then that probably means that they were basing it off of these stories that happened, right? If the Gospels were supposed to be historically accurate, I would find it more likely that like people used the story to make the art than that the story was like 100% accurate to what had actually happened, if that makes any sense. Now here's my last point. I'm going to provide you with kind of a controversial opinion. I kind of think that if you're a Christian, there's not really a good reason to not believe this. And here's what I mean. If you're religious, you are putting faith um, before reason. I don't think that that's mean to say. I think that those are just straight up opposite things. Faith and reason don't work together. Faith is kind of the rejection of reason just for like personal beliefs. So to suddenly decide to have reason about this one piece of fabric doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think that if you're skeptical about this one artifact, you should maybe take that skepticism and see where it can get you with the rest of your religion. If you're citing lack of evidence as a reason for not believing in the shroud, see what evidence there is about the rest of it. Because as an atheist, I don't really think that there is much. If having this belief, you know, makes you feel warm and fuzzy and secure in your beliefs and a little bit happier about the world, honestly, go for it. Like, it's not really hurting anybody at that point. Anyway, even though that doesn't make sense to me, uh, here we are, and this is an artifact that is continuing to be looked at and analyzed quite a bit. I encourage you to do some reading up on it yourself. Uh, in fact, you can go to their website, which looks straight out of the 90s and is equipped with a cute little uh, number tracker to see which visitor you are to the site. They're getting pretty close to six mil. I would keep a close eye on that because you might win like an iPad or something. I guess iPads weren't around when those stupid pop-ups would come up. We'll say iPod. You could win an iPod. I would love to hear everybody's thoughts on the shroud down in the description below. Let me know if I missed anything, if there's any other um, analysis that's been done that you find compelling. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'm hoping to post one a week. And you can support me on Patreon as well and join my Discord. Um, I think that's everything. So thank you so much for watching as always. Uh, this has been Kim. And I will see you in the next video where I will be talking about something else. Bye!